Alrighty, artists, so today what we're going to focus on is adding patterns to our sketch. You'll see that I already got started with a few here. The key is going to be having at least five sections with patterns in them. Um, and the cool thing about Zentangle patterns is you're literally tangling patterns together. So when we did those practice sketches the other day, um, we did wavy lines, curved lines, closed loops, um, the open loop and the bounce. Um, so you had all of these different ways to start dividing up a section and then adding patterns. So these are just the simple ways we can start it. Um, so what you could do is choose a certain section that you would like to do a pattern in. So for example, if I want to do a section here, I'm going to start with one of these things. You'll see that in this box I actually started off with the curved lines first. I went in and added curves to my hills. And then I added stripes in between and did kind of like a little chevron pattern where I switched off between my black and my white here. Um, so really all of these patterns start off with a more basic process of just starting with lines and then adding shapes in between. Um, so for example, if I wanted to do a pattern here, let's say I wanted to start with maybe a closed loop. So I could go in this section and then do something like this. Now this breaks up that section into three different parts if I wanted to. So I could do one pattern in here, one pattern on this section, and then one inside the loop as well. So just having a little bit of fun with this, for example, um, I can go over this with Sharpie right away if I am liking how that looks. Just like that. And maybe what I want might start off with is something like shape. So for example, um, I could maybe do kind of like some curved circles along this line here. It could be kind of fun. This is where your creative minds take over because I know all of you have different ideas for what you'd like to do for your patterns. So just showing you a fun idea. From here on out, I can start deciding, you know, maybe if I want to do some fun shapes or start with lines. So choose one or the other. Start with a line or start with a shape. If I start with shapes, maybe I want to do kind of like a triangle pattern and do some larger than others. If you feel comfortable working with Sharpie right away, you can. The only problem is you cannot erase if you make a mistake. So some students would prefer starting off with the pencil first and then going over the pencil once they feel comfortable with the pattern that they have. So I am just going in and making some of my triangles bigger than others. Maybe I'll incorporate some other shapes in here too that are triangles for a little variety. So you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, the key is you want to repeat something multiple times to create the pattern. Once I feel confident with that, I can go over and add Sharpie. And the cool thing about this artist is literally with Zentangle patterns, you can do patterns inside of patterns. So after I have all of these triangles in here, I can go in and continue to add more. So I could do more patterns on the inside of the triangles. So maybe I want to do little like wavy lines in here. I could go and add that to some of my bigger triangles. That's what I mean by pattern inside a pattern inside a pattern. Go over those with Sharpie when I'm feeling. I actually might use the thicker Sharpie for these two. I could do, you know, polka dots inside of one and rotate between those. I could do curved lines in some, polka dots in others, have a little bit of fun with it. I could do stripes. So really all it is, artists, is working with simple lines and shapes. It's all you're doing here and deciding where you want to put those. Your pattern sheet can be really helpful for inspiration. Um, so I go back to um, our little slideshow here. 
you'll see several examples on the sheets that were handed out to you. So this is just an example of one up here. Um, and you'll see some of them are darker than others. So for some of them, they kind of shade in some of the areas with Sharpie too. So don't feel like all of your patterns are going to be light. Um, you can go in and create some darker patterns in here too. So I could even fill in um, some of my shapes with maybe solid Sharpie too, or I could color this whole background black behind my triangles. I can do whatever I want for this. So And maybe I could still do these triangle patterns inside this shape and then do something completely different on the outside here. And remember, whatever shapes you want, just because the example has triangles doesn't mean you have to use triangles. And since this pattern's lighter, maybe I could do a darker pattern in this section too. There is one that I really liked from the example sheet that kind of starts off with a curved line like this. And it's a really bold curved line in the middle, and then there's a bunch of thinner ones surrounding it. So you start with that one bold line. Then I can go and do smaller ones around that. The greatest part about it is all I did is start off with simple lines and shapes and when you're finished they look super complex because you have so many different lines and shapes. I do like the idea of going in and shading the background of some of these. Create some contrast from the light background. Make my triangles pop a little bit more. Same thing right in here. So far I have one, two, three, four different sections of patterns, so I just need probably one or two more. And the rest we will be adding watercolor paint to later. Usually students leave the sky so that they can add watercolor to the sky. And they also leave the water if they have water in their drawing. 
blank as well because they really like adding the blue tones in there too. So it's just really important you're leaving some of those sections alone so you have a nice balance between color and black and white. Um, I would probably say I might add pattern on the inside of this wave here, maybe even in the sun, and also this little patch of land as well. So remember just starting with the line. Maybe I want to do like that bounce line here. And what I might do is put kind of like some leaf looking shapes in here. And some stripes on the top part of the sun. There's also a fun pattern where I can start with a line and then do dots too. So that's a fun one that's on your example sheet as well. So start with a line and then turn that line into dots. One final thing a lot of students like to do is make some of their lines a little bit bolder. So I could do a line around my sun and I could even fill that in. I could do that with the side of my mountain here. Make it appear as if there's a shadow behind it. Do that same thing to my tree. And once you're done with your patterns, this really helps define the edges of your shapes a little bit. Let's say you accidentally drew outside of the lines, you can really touch that up using this strategy as well. So have some fun with patterns artists and remember do your own be inventive you don't have to work from the practice sheet you can create them completely on your own as well.